So I've never used vulgar language on this YouTube channel ever before. Today I have three words for you. What the f So upfront summary for you as usual in my videos because I respect your time that way is to go out and just get this IKEA Symphonics picture frame before they run out of stocks at your local IKEA store. And why do I say that? This is simply the best Sonos sound per dollar that you can get. Even better than the Sonos One SL which is priced at 199 US dollars same as the One SL, this doesn't have a mic, that doesn't have a mic, but the sound is fantastic and it's much better than the sound that is coming out from the Sonos One SL. So IKEA, you have outdone Sonos this time round. And the bass response was so good that I had to pull out my Sonos S2 app to double check if I had accidentally paired the Sonos Sub together with the picture frame. The bass response is that. So as I've done for a lot of videos where I test out speakers, I measure their frequency response. So frequency response from 20 Hz all the way to 20 kHz. And I try to compare and see for myself what I'm hearing to confirm that I am correct. So I'm, I'm going to just move this out of the way so that you can see uh, on this blank wall that I'm going to pull up some of these charts. So on this particular picture here, you are going to see four color charts. Now it's going to look a little bit messy, so pardon me, but I've compared this speaker with the Sonos Play 1, which is similar in sound profile to the Sonos 1. I've done a video on that before, and that is represented by the orange curve. The IKEA Symphonics bookshelf is represented by the red curve, and the Lamp Gen 2 from IKEA Symphonics range is represented by the green curve. And finally, for this picture frame, it is being represented by the blue curve. Now, if you look at the blue curve, you will see that it confirms what we have been hearing. The bass response is the best out of the whole lot. Now, it's not significantly louder throughout the entire range because in the mid-range where your vocal performance is hanging out between the frequency of say about 300 Hz all the way to 1-2 kHz, I would say that this picture frame it loses out in terms of frequency response to the rest of the speaker that we are comparing them to. So if you are into vocals, maybe you'll be better served by another speaker such as the One or the One SL. And in terms of volume, you'll see that the IKEA Symphonics bookshelf is producing the loudest volume across all the speakers that we're comparing on this particular chart here. But all in all, because of that peak, because of how the picture frame handles the bass, the, the whole feel of the music, the sound that is coming out actually feels very deep, very rich and is um, pretty mellow kind of sound. I don't really listen to a lot of vocals on the picture frame because I do feel that for vocals, it will be better served by the Sonos One or the Sonos Play Once. Now in terms of soundstage, which cannot be measured by the frequency response curve, you will find that the IKEA Symphonics LAM Gen 2 actually has a broader soundstage. So in terms of soundstage, if you're going for that, then it will be the Symphonics LAM Gen 2. For this particular picture frame here, it is all about the bass. Now let's pull away the frequency response chart for a moment and let's try to figure out how does this particular picture frame produce the kind of bass that I was so blown away by, right? So if you look at the picture frame, it is just 
this size, all right? I think it's about five centimeters deep. So if you angle it a certain way, you will see that the profile actually is uh, pretty slim, but it does need a little bit of space for the drivers, the magnet, right? To house the whole unit right at the back here. I'm gonna open this up a little bit, not disassembling and not unscrewing anything, but just basically remove this um, fabric front where the picture is. Well, this is actually available in black and white. I chose the black one because my walls are a little bit gray. I actually didn't intend to mount them, but they sounded so good. I've decided that right, to mount them permanently. And I really enjoy the sound from the IKEA Symphonics picture frame. So let's open up this speaker and find out what the secret is. Now, if you go to the back, right, you'll see that there are some um, cavities, right? There are two of them on all four sides. Now, what happens is that if you try to remove the fabric from the front and try to pry it out, you might spoil it. So how you actually do it is you poke your fingers through to the back and you push it out, okay? And you repeat it for all four sides and it will loosen itself up in no time. Now, there are still a few um, pins in the middle where you just have to gently pry them out. These are like speaker grills of the O where, well, you'll see in a bit. Where, where, where? Yep. Uh, yeah, this is acoustically transparent. There's a honeycomb grid here. It doesn't affect the sound. It's supposed to let the sound through pretty well. Now, this, these are the pins here where it will hook into the picture frame via this rubber grommet so that it holds itself and it doesn't rattle. Now, hopefully IKEA is going to come up with a few more designs besides the black and the white, you know, so uh, to customize how the way our walls look, right? And this is a picture frame, a picture frame, you should be able to choose your own picture. I think at some point in time, people are going to realize how good these speakers are and they will start customizing all this fabric so that you can change the look of the picture frame and still keep the same great sound. Okay, so here you go. This is the entire speaker, right? This is the bass driver. Well, it's a little bit small, so I won't call it the bass driver, but it handles the bass duty. And this is the tweeter. Now the tweeter has like a wave guide here. There are eight fins here, which is supposed to direct the higher frequency. And that's how the wave guide works. Now you will notice that there's nothing else, right? So no other parts of the picture frame actually produce a sound except for these two drivers here. But what is interesting is that this part here, right? And you realize that the IKEA Symphonics picture frame is actually a ported speaker. And that is how they compensate for the lack of depth, right? Because usually when you are looking to increase the bass, you increase the cabinet size, you increase the cabinet volume, and you have more air to push around and you can afford to then enclose the whole speaker for a more balanced sound. So the bass port actually helps to generate bass notes because there is a limitation in size for this particular speaker. Now, bear in mind, the Sonos One is not a ported speaker. It is a sealed design. Even the Sonos Play 3s of the old, that one is actually, I think it's sealed, but uh, it does have a passive bass radiator, like the Beam. The Beam also has a passive bass radiator to help enhance the bass. What the IKEA Symphonics picture frame does is that it uses a port. So this port helps to enhance the bass, which is why you are hearing such great bass from this particular speaker. I am terribly, terribly impressed by this. Now you're going to be looking at this speaker and you're going to be wondering, you know, whether uh, how this compares with some of the other speakers that are around this price range. And I will do a very quick rundown on that. As compared to the Sonos Play 1 or the Sonos 1 or the 1 SL, functionality aside, the sound, I would say this is definitely a superior sound. It does sound better than the Sonos One, One SL, or the Play One. 
um, you might want to compare it with the Sonos Play 3. I don't think a lot of people have the Sonos Play 3 anymore, but I would say in terms of loudness, they are comparable. This is, uh, it, it can go pretty loud, right? The response chart I showed you earlier, it was measured at a standardized volume, but it doesn't tell you how much louder you can push those speakers. And the picture frame actually can be pushed much louder than the Sonos Play 1s or the Sonos 1 One SLs. The Sonos Play 3, they do go quite loud, but because of the passive bass radiator, I didn't think that the bass response was that great. It definitely was louder in the bass department than the Sonos 1, but this particular picture frame with the port here to help with the bass response, actually, I would think the bass is much richer and sounds better than the Sonos Play 3s. Now, if you're going to be comparing it with the Sonos 5, then of course, this is no fight. There's no competition here. This picture frame costs $219, whereas the Sonos 5s are going to be costing almost three times the price. Well, not three times, but over two times the price of this particular one. And if I were to use $500, $550, I would say get a pair of these and you'll still have spare change in your pocket. And like I've said in all my videos right up to this day, speakers are meant to be paired in stereo. On its own, the picture frame does not throw a stereo image. It does not play stereo. The Sonos Play 3 and the Sonos 5s, when laid horizontally, they do throw out a stereo image, but not for the picture frame. So if you want to get true stereo, you do have to buy a pair of these picture frames. Now then you also want to compare them with the IKEA Symphonics range. The IKEA Symphonics bookshelf has all along been a budget champion, right? Because for $99, you get Sono Sound, you get all the streaming services at your fingertips, and they can be paired to a surround sound system as the surround channel. So for $99, no brainer, that is the best value for money. Whereas in terms of sound department, of course, this is going to be sounding a lot better than the IKEA Symphonics bookshelf. Now, compared to the IKEA Symphonics LAM, I would say that the LAM throws a better soundstage and it doubles up as a LAM, like the bookshelf doubles up as a potentially a bookshelf, not a very book, big bookshelf, but well, a small shelf for you to place things if you do wall mount them. But the LAM actually doubles itself as a light. And the Gen 2, I personally find them to look a lot better and a lot more pleasing as a lamp than the Gen 1 lamp. Whereas this, they are touted as picture frame, but I'm not sure if I like this generic design, either in white or in black. Uh, so unless they allow for some customization and some changes and more options, I would say that um, its duty as a picture frame is going to be uh, pretty limited. But they are easy to warm out and they don't take up a lot of space. Just bear in mind that it actually is quite big. I'm gonna just put it next to me and you can see definitely larger than a uh, A3, maybe even A2 kind of a piece of paper. So in the IKEA Symphonics range of uh, Sonos products, I would say that this is definitely one of the best speakers that they have made. And I have said earlier in the video, this IKEA has definitely outdone Sonos in terms of sonic performance when it comes to a speaker at about the $200 range. So a couple of things, uh, I will cover the physical aspect of this and how you mount them, and I will then cover how you're going to deploy these speakers. So first off, I'm going to replace the frame. I'm going to replace the fabric right in front. Very easy, just snap it back into place and that's it, okay? Now, earlier, I put this line against the wall. In fact, that was how I intended to use these guys initially, and I didn't want to wall mount them because I wasn't very sure whether I was going to keep them in the long run. But I realized that the sound was so great, I did commit myself and I drilled my wall to put up these brackets so that I can use these um, holes, these slots, to hang on the wall as a picture frame. You can hang them vertically or you can rub them the other way and hang them horizontally. Now, there are felt um, stickers here 
and all of them are already mounted by IKEA, so it doesn't damage your wall, whichever direction you decide to hang them. It also comes with a fabric strap, a nylon strap, where you can screw in and you can mount them to the wall so that, you know, in case the bracket fails, it still holds on to something else, okay? Now, um, the, it comes with a 3 meter power cord. Unfortunately, one of the picture frame, I think the other one, it came with only a 2 meter power uh, cord. Oh, in fact, this is the one. This cord here is 2 meter and it is right angle. Okay, I think IKEA made a mistake in packing this particular speaker. It is not supposed to be right angle, it's supposed to be a straight one and it's supposed to be 3 meters long. This particular one is 2 meters and it is right angle. It is actually meant for the IKEA Symphonics Lamp Gen 2, which I compared with the power cord that came with the Lamp Gen 2, and it was exactly the same, right angle and two meters long. And there are multiple um, routing options here, all these grooves here, and you can actually route them so that, you know, it goes against your wall and you don't have ugly cables dangling. Well, it will still dangle, and the unfortunate part is that the cable is white, but I guess a lot of people will have uh, whiter walls or lighter shades of walls, unlike the grey shade that I have. So the white colour cord probably blends in a little bit better. Now, there are also these rubber studs that they have provided that you can insert into the groove so that when you place them on the floor or on any shelf, it it doesn't run around. Okay, well, bad example because it just came out. But I was just a little bit rough there. I'm just going to put it back on. Yep. And even after you angle them, it doesn't run. And you can mount them any direction. Just bear in mind that if you have a stereo pair and you're mounting them horizontally, push the tweeters to the far left and the far right so that you get a wider sound stage. Now, in terms of how to deploy these picture frames, you can use them on its own or you can pair them into stereo and they make for a pretty decent uh, music player. And if you are not into vocals and you just want some music to pipe into the room, I would say that they are inconspicuous and they blend into your deco pretty well and you will be able to fill the room with sound. The other way to use them is actually as surround. So if you have a play bass or play bar or the newer Beam, Beam Gen 2 or the Sonos Arc, you can actually pair them as surround. Oh, even if you have the Sonos M, which actually can act as a home theater hub, then this will also be able to act as the surround channels. Now, the last thing you can do is, of course, you can pair a sub with this. I did try that and in fact, it, well, the base was actually good enough already, so you don't actually have to buy a very expensive sub. This guy on his own has great base, so you might want to save a little bit on that. You probably don't need it, unless, of course, you are setting up a home theater with the Sonos Arc or the Sonos Beam, and then the subwoofer will definitely add another dimension to your movies. Okay, so that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that if you do decide to get the IKEA Symphonix picture frame, you will enjoy it as much as I do. For now, it is going to be a permanent fixture on my wall. Where is it? Here? Here? Ah, okay. And routing here. Okay, and I will see you in my next video. My next video might be talking about the new product that Sonos is launching in the month of May. Stay tuned. If you're not already subscribed, do subscribe. Leave a like on this video so that more people can find this channel and tell your friends about it.